This is the You Winning Life Podcast, your number one source for mastering a positive existence. Each episode, we'll be interviewing exceptional people, giving you empowering insights, and guiding you to extraordinary outcomes. Learn from specialists in the worlds of integrative and natural wellness, spirituality, psychology, and entrepreneurship. So you too can be winning life. Now, here's your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, certified neuro emotional technique practitioner and certified entrepreneur coach, Jason Wasser. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's guest is an entrepreneur, investor, and CTO of the company Tetra Noodle, which is a software consulting company that helps startup founders with tech projects. He started his career at the age of 15 had no contracts, no resources, was determined to improve his life and realized that education and the right training was the only way to help him receive his goals. He required, he got, he achieved this really awesome but modest education and went on to become the technical leader and CTO in multiple startups. He's really passionate about education and training because without it, these achievements would not have been possible. And while building his career, Manoj, fought decades of anxiety, depression, and pessimism by indulging in and beat it by uh, going through meditation and mindfulness. He's deeply spiritual and focuses on accessing and training his subconscious mind to create the life of his dreams actively. Manoj, thank you so much for well, joining Thanks me. a lot for having me and for such a, a nice introduction. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. No. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get into the mindfulness and the psychology of being an entrepreneur, I'm very curious, and I'm sure other people are curious about your story about how you decided to enter into this world of technology, where yeah, you're yeah. from, and what life was like for you before all this became so fruitful and so yeah, successful. So, well, I grew up in India. It was a very small town. Um, and uh, India was very much a growing country back then, third world country. Now things have changed quite a bit. But even now, like the town I belong to, uh, there's there's not a lot of opportunities there uh, in terms of uh, higher educational opportunities, a premier education. Uh, and back then there was not like, you know, there was maybe one or two colleges which were not like, you know, specialized um, uh, colleges for engineering or higher uh, sort of a higher level of studies. Uh, so uh, for me, it was basically, you know, just uh, figuring out what to do. And uh, so I enrolled in a bachelor's degree program for business, um, commerce, accounting and economics and stuff like that. And then I started working in a factory for at, at about 15 years of age. And uh, so I was working there uh, like six days a week, continuing my studies. Um, and so it was kind of a tough, uh, tough uh, life, uh, you know, working 12 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, and uh, it was not make, you know, earning, it was not earning a lot of money, two dollars a day. Um, and from there, you know, uh, uh, basically I, I fell into, um, like I discovered uh, my love for computers and technology and programming. Um, it was just basically, you know, as you say, like um, it's not planned. You you have an overall direction of where you want to go, but it's you know the next step is not planned. But things start to show up, and you just need to you know take some chances. So in this case, uh, computer programming institute opened up in my in my small town, and so the first year I couldn't really enroll because of the cost and everything. The second year I was able to enroll, um, and then you know I just fell in love. I mean this was before we had internet i mean the first computer i used there was uh, i think 386 i don't even know people will remember that when what one megabyte of ram and there was no hard disk and we used to put in a, a floppy disk to load the program and another floppy disk to run the program um most people won't remember all this stuff um, but yeah i mean that's where i started and and i uh, enjoyed it so much i used to uh, try and steal um the limited time we used to have in computer labs, I used to sort of barter with others and, uh, you know, just uh, get them to uh, give me their time so that I can have more uh, time on the on the computers. And and one thing led to another, and sort of, you know, um, I, I've actually found my uh, um, my wife there. I've been met there as well in the in the same program, uh, and then eventually came over to North America and started working in the tech industry and had lots of challenges, ups and downs there as well, as 
everybody does. And so, yeah, that sort of a high level story of how I got started. So I want to go back to this $2 a day mm. income and put it into perspective of the possibilities that people have today, yeah. oh. especially yeah. with, right. Technology is everywhere right what and i uh, you know, i graduated high school in 1996 and i remember having dial up internet that i didn't even have aol yet at my house i dial up internet in the library at our school through the library email thing and it was yeah. a tree it was an internet tree i don't know if, right, if you remember that the early day. and that was it right and then aol um, and we were able to start connecting with other people and keep in touch yeah. with other people, but no one thought about programming or apps. I mean, yeah. web design wasn't even mm -hmm. a thing then at that point, but just monetizing yeah. some possibility in some type of tech field, unless you were an engineer was pretty much the only way of doing it. Right. And you're, so when you started this college program, you were how old? Uh, I think uh, 17, 18 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. At 17, 18 years old. Okay. Right. And, and but $2 yeah. a day. What would be the average family income if you stayed in your community back then? I mean, it's like hundred, hundred to two hundred dollars a month. Hundred dollars a month as a combined family potential. Yeah, because income. generally in India, uh, back, especially in those days, only one person, like the uh, the husband, works, and you know, in some cases, the kids work as well. Some cases, uh, not all the time. Right. But, um, Right. And what sacrifices did you have to have because you were had to decide of oh, those two dollars a day what you had to get versus what you couldn't get? It was kind of tough. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, you had to make a lot of choices. You know, what uh, what do you want to spend your money on? Uh, you know, getting to a place. To, I mean, I've, I've always been um, more focused on making sure I can um, I can add more experiences in my life. So I, I try to look for uh, things which I hadn't experienced before. Uh, and so the drive was always to, you know, um, meet new people, uh, go to new places, uh, enroll in new new things and uh, and discover new things. So whatever I could do with, mm. with that much money, um, you know, I tried to incorporate uh, new newness in the, in the, in the experiences I was having, uh, because I knew that if I just keep repeating the same old thing, it's not, never going to lead to anything, right? The only thing, on the only way you bring about progress is to have to force yourself to have new experiences, meet new people, and you know, somewhere something strikes, um, and then you find the next step from there. Uh, I mean, that's how yeah. I think uh, about life. Well, I totally agree with you. And I think that most people out there don't realize the cost of personal mm -hmm. investment for personal yeah. development is radically yeah. important. And that'll get them to the next part of their life when it comes to their emotional health, yeah. their physical health, their spiritual health, their business and yeah. career health. So at what point did you know that that was the decision that you wanted to make? Because it really sounds like you just said to me that I knew that I had to make investments into my personal development. So here's the thing. Um, I had no idea, you know, where this is going to go. Um, the only thing, and even today, I, I try to do it this way. You know, I look at, um, so this whole thing started, you know, I, I remember uh, I was uh, talking to somebody on a similar podcast and they were like, you know, what happened? Was it a trigger point when you, you know, you, something's changed in you or whatever. And I remember as far as the best of my ability, the key point was, you know, I picked up a few business magazines in, in the place I was working and they were um, obviously full of stories from rags to riches and blah, blah, blah. So, and then I was reading these uh, biographies of these amazing people. And I was like, you know, these, these, these people are no different than I am. I mean, some of them had even worse uh, start than I did, you know? Uh, so like what, I mean, at the end of the day, they, they are same species, same capabilities, same everything. So what can I do um, to follow uh, these people? And uh, obviously it was not something that, that was even radically possible at that time, but it, I, I, you know how it is like, there is a, there is a hope, there's a pipe dream that is born. And then you just start to like, you know, uh, just take one step at a time. Uh, every day you have 10,000 uh, options, 10,000 seconds in front of you. You know, if you, if you just take a few 
uh, second out of that and sort of apply it towards that that pipe dream that you have, it starts to compound. And I don't know how it happens. You know, I, I wish I could give you a blueprint for that, but you know, just that like little bit, uh, like chipping away at something little by little, uh, is uh, is you know, it, it compounds one day into something really big. Well, as I'm looking at some of the list of your accomplishments, um, besides being, you know, incredibly lucky to have met your right wife in the right time in the right program, right? Um, and becoming right a father of, of two children. But 20 years doing yeah. this so far, 500 million yeah. plus in value yeah. delivered, multiple patents, teaching 125,000 plus students, two books, traveling the world, seeking adventure, having a podcast. That's a lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, see, the thing is, um, if we take uh, anybody's life, they have accomplished uh, probably more uh, than this. The only thing that, that it takes is, you know, just sit down and inventory the the impact that you've had so far. And, uh, you know, if you take your example, you must have her helped like thousands and thousands of people or, you know, even 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 uh, whatever that number is, like, you know, 100,000, whatever that number is. If you sit down and take the inventory of the kind of impact you've had, uh, and then start to dig a little bit deeper and and learn about the stories of the people you have helped. I mean, you can come up with so much um, material that you know. I I you know for me it was like six lines, but for you it could be like six books. Um, you know, it's it's like uh, just looking at observing these little things and the kind of impact you can have. Uh, the uh, you know we we all have that capacity, right? It's uh, that's true. Well, it sounds to me like the challenge that I want to now reissue to everybody that's mm. listening is that what I just read from both your bio and um, some of the accomplishments that you've had to date is from your one sheet. And it sounds to me that if we can challenge people to create their yeah. own one sheet, that it doesn't have to be to be a public speaker or for your podcast or for your business, but what is your one sheet to date? And it's so different mm-hmm. than a bio, yeah. right? And I don't know if you're familiar with Jesse Itzler. Um, uh, he's a really incredible entrepreneur, but he has this idea of building your life yeah. resume, yeah. right? And, and not only what do you do when it comes to work, but what are the cool things you've exactly. done in your life? Have you run a marathon? Have you, um, have you won a cooking contest? Have you traveled to this random place in the right? And putting that on your your, your life yeah. resume. So it becomes a whole complexity of yeah. who you are, not just what you've done for other yeah. people, yeah. but taking it and enhancing it to a much bigger picture. So I like that, that, you know, the thing you put in there is you're traveling, you're seeking adventure, your father, your, right. All these beautiful things that round you out as a whole. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing is like uh, the, the realization that uh, comes at least came to me is that uh, all these aspects that you mentioned, you know, adventure and uh, your family and your physical, mental, spiritual health, uh, they are part of the same continuum, right? Like most people, they run about one thing, which is money. And then they, you know, uh, for the way that the society has been set up and, and the amount of money, that sort of um, forces us to ignore other aspects of the life. And the thing is, once you realize that they all need to stay at at uh, somewhat of a similar level, you cannot have like a, a very uh, you know a prominent successful career and um, you know all other aspects of your life are in shambles. It gen- generally, doesn't happen that way, especially if you're coming from behind. So you really need to take care of all other aspects of life as well, so that you know the, your success and financial status also keeps up with other aspects of life. Uh, make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I see that especially as a therapist, right? Where everything, we, we, we always joke and talk about this work-life balance. And the, my, my first question to my clients is, why do you believe it needs to be in balance? Because there's always going to be a part of your life that's going to be a little bit more advanced based on the fact that you've made it a priority or you spent more time, effort, energy, and money investing yeah. in that. So I don't know if everything's ever going to be in balance, but what I'd be afraid of is how big is the discrepancy and the gap between yeah, other exactly. aspects of your life? 
right? So, so if you're at a nine in work and you're at a seven in your health, yeah. that's okay, right? But if you're at a nine in your work and you're at a four in your relationships, that's where yeah, I would be. Exactly. And start. what I've noticed, uh, sorry, so, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, what, what I've noticed is that um, just having that intent in the back of your mind is, is a very, very big step. You know, just uh, like a lot of people, and, and I, I used to think that way as well. Like, uh, you know, if I make X number of dollars, then I'm going to enjoy my life or I'm going to spend this much time with my kids or, uh, you know, I'm going to. Or I'll be exactly happy people. when. But the, but the point yeah. here is that uh, what I realized was you need to bring that into the now. You actually uh, need to say, OK, you know what? I don't have all the money that I needed, but I, I'm going to try and get that feeling in my life. Uh, however I do it. Um, and once you start to get those feelings in your life, uh, you know, you, you need to, you may need to be scaled down version of what that may look like, you know, instead of going to uh, Fiji or, you know, exotic place, maybe just uh, uh, go to a nearby town, but at least spend that time. And that having that intent, um, what it does is, as I said earlier, it may, as soon as that opportunity uh, opens up, a long weekend opens up or something like that happens, you can say, you know what, uh, my intent is to, uh, you know, uh, balance my family life. This is my chance. Let's take it. And, uh, you know, um, it, it won't hurt anybody. You know, it's not going to be as costly. It's not going to affect my uh, business. Uh, let's take, take this chance and balance out that uh, part of my life. It may not like, it may not spark a magic uh, light like on a weekend. But it, it will set you on that path to addressing that part of your life and, and slowly and steadily, you know, it, things start to uh, heal there. Well, you and I are in total agreement about that. That momentum starts with that first mm-hmm. pedal on the bike. And, and, and if you know, right, if, right, on any type of regimen, it's those first few days, it's those first mm-hmm. few pedals that have the yeah, most resistance, yeah. right? But eventually, as that momentum goes, as long as you have the energy you right the, the, and the muscle memory and all that stuff it's going to yeah. keep going and i do believe and this is what i challenge my clients over and over again is that i'm not looking for you to have this magic game changer today it'll be great if you do if we can right have a mic drop as they say and and life is a game changer i'm more concerned with having what's the pivot that we can do and start slowly shifting you into the opposite yeah. direction in a more yeah. meaningful way that gets you closer exactly, to your purpose and yeah. potential and then continue to do that over a sustained period of time over exactly. a long period of time. That's what I'm more concerned mm-hmm. with. And, and at the end of the day, as much as it sounds psychological, it's also very mm-hmm. spiritual, mm-hmm. right? And, and I know that one of the things that you... Uh, that we taught that I mentioned in your bio is that you fought this anxiety, this depression, and this mm-hmm. pessimism... Um, so what, what was going on yeah. with that? And then let's talk a little bit more about how mindfulness and meditation helped you solve. Yeah. Um, so, you know, see, uh, like just, uh, just uh, last week, I took a, a really deep personality test. Okay? Um, and I'm planning to offer it to uh, some other people as well. But here's what happened. I discovered some things about myself I didn't know. Uh, even though I, I thought I was, you know, fairly self-aware and all that stuff. But uh, through this test, I found that one of the, core values that I have is, uh, is family support. Um, and so, uh, you know, that explained a lot, you know, once that I realized that about myself, that explained a lot, uh, in terms of what happened with me in my life is because, you know, I was distant with my parents and for whatever reason, let's go there, but there, there was some, uh, there was some friction there. Um, then there was some friction in, in the marriage. Then there was some friction with the kids. So, you know, when this thing uh, started happening over and over again, I started to notice a pattern that, you know, uh, why do I get into these situations all the time? And obviously it's easy to blame others uh, when you're dealing with adults and say, ah, you know, these people don't understand. Uh, and to some degree, yeah, I mean, people don't understand each other unless you communicate. Um, and then when it happened with my kid, that was the breaking point where I was like, you know, this doesn't make sense whatsoever. Like, I cannot have, uh, you know, a good relationship with my kid. Like, w- what is going on there? Like, I cannot blame a kid for, for this behavior. So at that point, I sought out, uh, like, major help. You know, I needed to fix that uh, before anything else. And, you know, I, I, I looked at... Uh, I, and whatnot. I mean, their answer was, we'll fix you, but you'll need to come to us for the rest of your life. And I was like, you know, that's not a fix. That's 
you know that's in my opinion that's a fix so so then when i met uh, my spiritual mentor like there was a transformation like you know within f- few hours right because you understand the reality the real reality that is un- happening under the covers is like we are not, we are creating our reality by the perceptions that we have built in our minds um and so whatever was happening was me being uh like whatever i was being you know being protective of my own hurt my own past uh, projecting my own negativity on other people and expecting them to ser- behave certain way and then when they behaved that way i used to get upset um so it's like all this uh, stupidity that we create in our life uh it's like uh, you know um, a windshield wiper wiping off all that uh, snow and uh, rain off your windshield and now you can see clearly now you can uh, move ahead clearly and that was sort of the experience that i had so for me in my practice the way i work with my clients is i don't worry um about a diagnosis or pathology in fact i don't take clients that um are anything beyond what we would call the worried mm. well you're the average human being who are going through average life stuff you may have some anxiety you may have some depression but i don't work with more severe yeah. or significant mental yeah. health concerns and everything that i do is to help them understand the narrative or the story yeah. that they're telling is probably not organically mm. their own but it's just a result of experiences from their family from their culture from their history from their religion from their experiences mm. that they've mm. adopted willingly yeah. and unwillingly that are keeping them away from who they authentically are and then they're reacting to experiences uh, or people or yeah, to yeah. things based on yeah, those beliefs exactly. right so so when it comes to that mindset and i know a lot of us especially in eastern philosophies um and mystical traditions uh is very similar mm-hmm. to that that you know and i had this client uh, conversation with a client this morning i said um cuz he went through a lot of uh, emotional abuse as mm-hmm. as a child and is struggling and we figured out that the whole core thing is that the one thing that will help him solve every aspect of his life is confidence in his belief mm-hmm. of who he is yeah. and we realize that once he found that confidence it'll answer his career issues it'll answer his relationship mm-hmm. issues it'll answer his spirituality issues and now the trick is how does he singularly minded focus on understanding what true healthy confidence mm. is well yeah, yeah knowing that he yeah. deserves that right so i asked him the question i said in your spiritual background do you believe that you're a body that has a soul or a soul that has a body and his first thought was well yeah i'm a body that has a soul so okay so if you're primary a body that has a soul then your life will gunk you up and you'll never get access to it because your life experiences is holding you away from all these wonderful potential things and until you dig away all of those things you're never going to have access to your soul mm-hmm. potential right but if you're the other way around if you're a soul that has a body then no matter what gunk gets thrown at you your soul will always eventually find yeah, a way to yeah. shine through and it will never be bl- yeah, blemished yeah, for sure yeah and his very, face very, just very, like very beautifully put. yeah uh, that's uh, very well said yeah for sure Right so if we start from that premise because a lot of times we have to challenge and especially I know in mindfulness and meditation is what's the premise that we're holding on to right when I when I've um spent about a year doing some Buddhist mindfulness meditation uh in a in a in a meditation group the first thing was that they asked us to have is uh to have the chant while we're breathing in is clear mind clear mind right and and then on the out breath is to have the thought in our mind don't know And the first question is is why do you say clear mind clear mind because you want your mind to be empty and then all of a sudden you're saying don't know what are you saying don't know to and they said that split second between the sec- you stop saying clear mind clear mind that you clean out your what you white the windshield wiper as you said yeah some thought is going to creep in that you think is going to be meaningful or you think is going to make you sad or has some type of determination of who you and who and what you need to be and the response to the be don't know it doesn't matter yeah. it's just a thought exactly no it's beautiful yeah um i practice uh, slightly differently but at the end of the day it's all about uh, you know how the mind works um the thoughts which are the raw materials for everything else and yeah how do you understand this whole mechanism uh, it's fascinating stuff yeah 
So what are some of the actual practices that you've been implementing? Um, and is there a way to share some quick ways that the people listening yeah. to this can actually start applying? Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's no, uh, like, it's no magic, right? You know, one is meditation uh, uh, in the morning. I, I, uh, try to make sure that I do it at least five days a week, uh, no more than 15, 20 minutes. I try, uh, sometimes in the evening as well. Um, and then, uh, journaling is, uh, has been helping quite a bit journaling and, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, understanding everything that I've, I've discovered, you know, the number one thing that I have, uh, found be the the first step is self awareness. So anything that you can do to raise your self awareness, understand yourself, um, you know, uh, really deeply. Like you know, we all have like really dark demons inside us, and we have very very uh, creative light uh, uh, inside us as well. So you, you need to not only focus on the good part, but also the bad parts and the and the and the things which are you, which make you afraid, angry, all that stuff. If you start to understand yourself much better, it actually helps understanding other people because now you become more empathetic uh, towards other people, and uh, things fall into place um, very nicely. You know, you're having a conversation, you can understand other person better, their perspective better. You can understand mass psychology better. You can understand marketing better. You can do more sales. It's all sort of related. It starts from there. And that's how it's all sort of interconnected. So m short answer, you know, start with self-awareness, which will lead you to paths that will be individualized, personalized for you because everybody's different. So I know you mentioned that you took a self, like a test, a self test, and some of the the work um, that I use with my clients. Right, I'm very big on the four, um, the, the, sorry, the, the, yeah. the five love languages, which is very, very important. And then especially in a business community, to know your the the love language, the communication language of the people mm -hmm. you're working with, um, is is really yeah. powerful. There's one that I do with my clients on their money language, um, which is cool. I'm a big fan of the uh, Myers Briggs. And it's not the yeah. end all be all. Um, over the years, and especially more recently, I've been getting into the Enneagram mm -hmm. testing, which very much focuses on all your positive strengths and, like you talked about, the dark side, but mm -hmm. the shadow and how to leverage it, what stressors mm -hmm. will trigger you uh, when you're in certain experiences, how will you respond, how do you try to connect mm -hmm. with people. Um, and um, yeah, there's, those are the big things that I feel. What are some of the things that you've, uh, some of the assessments or some of the tools that you've found really helpful? Uh, uh, you know, we, when I coach people, I go through certain similar steps. One is, uh, you know, uh, I work on finding the core values um, of the people and understanding and helping them understand as well, uh, understanding their why. Because I think that, again, you know, this is all part of self-awareness, right? So, so these components, understanding your why, what is driving you, you know, we're all running after something. But we sometimes forget what the heck we are running after or why we are running after. That's more important. So once you understand why that is uh, important to you, um, then you can start to build a map, a mental map of what happens if you do not get this done and what happens if you get it done, right? And so that aspect of what happens that do not get it done, um, you need to use it as a motivation. I mean, you, I mean imagine the worst case scenario. Right? Imagine the worst case scenario. I, I don't know what, whatever that is. Let's say, let's say you're gonna lose everything. You're gonna you're gonna be on the street. You're gonna have to beg. You're gonna, you know, you, you're just gonna become a homeless, wretched person. That's the worst case scenario. Or some, you know, I talked to somebody like a couple of weeks ago, and they're like, the worst case scenario is death. I'm like, that's not too bad, you know. <laughs> you know, you you have no idea what's gonna happen. So it's not the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is you're gonna have to live, and then you have to endure all the all the challenges. Um, but let's say that is a worst case scenario. Uh, that you need to do, take as motivation and say, okay, you know what? I have limited time left here. So what can I do to accomplish my goals? And the best case scenario, if I do accomplish my goals, these are all the things that I'm going to be experiencing. So get into the habit of experiencing those things little by little and taking action towards that goal. Now, just after you have done this exercise, let go. You know, this is now you're on auto, autopilot, meaning like, you know, you're taking micro actions. You're just focusing on what could be, what it, it should not be. And if it, if, you know, if, if the negative happens, be prepared for that. And, and so, you know, 
this mental map helps you you know sort of find your way next step and all that stuff and you keep repeating it every day how can we help people more figure out if their why is authentically mm-hmm. theirs versus part of the story of their unfinished business and they're doing it maybe more from a you know if i do this then maybe i'll yeah. finally get the love that i want or the relationships yeah. that i want or that um accolades yeah. that I want. So how can we strip away that final yeah. layer to make sure that it's truly, you know, in their okay. integrity? So a couple of ways that I, I do it is, um, you know, first of all, once you understand why you're doing this, ask another why, you know, ask, um, okay, so, you know, I'm, I want to make money. Why do I want to make money? Uh, I want to buy a bigger house. Why do I want to buy a bigger house? Well, I want to take care of my family. Why do you want to take care of your family? Because, you know, when I was growing up, this is what happened to me. Uh, and I don't want this to happen to my kids or whatever. And, and, and once you get to a point where you cannot, like, there is no other further explanation. It is what it is. And that's generally rooted in your love, your feelings for others and, and for yourself. And that's where, that's, that's when you know, you know, this is your true why. Another exercise could be, you know, if you really want uh, to understand what, what is your why, what drives you, put yourself in those, all those situations and, and, just feel, you know, are you feeling on the top of your world or like, are you, let's say, you know, money is, is, um, is something you're running after. Maybe, you know, take a, uh, if you have a line of credit, like take out $20,000, 30, 50,000, whatever, put it, put it all over your bed and, and sleep in it and see what kind of feeling you get. Is this, you know, is this, uh, giving you like a feeling that, um, that you don't care about anything else in life anymore. If, if not, then that's not your value. That, that's not your why, you know, uh, go to the next level and see, you know, if the house is your why, you know, just try to stay away from your house or think about something happened to your house, uh, something broke down. How did it make you feel? Like, was that the end of the world? If not, then go deeper, deeper. And when you get to a point where you find something like, Oh, you know, if something, uh, like, you know, you, you reach a point where you say, okay, you know, my, my wife, my family, my kids. And now you say, okay, you know, if I'm separated from my kids one day, how do I feel? And when I, when I enjoy, you know, one hour of uh, uh, a good time with my kids, how does that make me feel? And that feeling will tell you, you know, this is, this is it, you know, it's like tuning a radio, right? So you just fine tune it, fine tune it until you find the frequency. So should people not expect to have this answered overnight? Mm. This can take days, this can take weeks, this can take months, this can take years. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, because uh, if you think about it, uh, majority, 90, like, again, you know, uh, I've read some scientific studies on this. 90% of the people are not self-aware. They think they are self-aware, but they're not self-aware. So you can imagine 90% of the people come onto this earth, they live their entire life, 100 years or so, not knowing who they are. They leave the earth. Um, and so much is left at the table in terms of their the life enjoyment they could have had, you know, the time they could have invested in all that stuff. So, um, it's a worthwhile exercise, but it doesn't mean that, you know, most people go through it. Uh, something has to trigger that. Uh, I was, And that's what I always say as well. Like, you know, these challenges people talk about, they are in fact uh, the biggest gifts that you can get because these are the challenges that drive your you know, forces you to pick your path. If, if you don't have these challenges, you know, I could have landed up dead. I could have landed up in a jail uh, or whatever. Um, but those challenges were the ones that led me to seek something. Um, so, so it's all sort of, you know, connected in a, in a way um, that if you take life as it comes, it actually unravels in a very beautiful way. Yeah. Well, that's everything that you and I are doing in that similarity is, I know I have this mission of helping people minimize their stressors and maximize their potential. And when a client comes in and they say, well, how are you going to help me? I, I said, well, I can't help you until I know exactly what your core values are because I can make, right. My job as a therapist is not to make suggestions and to do experiments. My job is to help you uncover your own truth and help you figure out that the decisions you've been making have probably been based on a false yeah. premise, right? As we were talking about before with that narrative. So I do need to know, and I send them home with a worksheet, whether it's a couple, whether it's a business, right? Whether it's a, a high school kid, um, I want to know your core values. And from there, I'm going to help you create a path that will get you to where you want to be. That's in alignment yeah. with that. From there, 
we will go and say, okay, now once I know your core values, tell me what are your five highest priorities in your life? And they'll come up with a list like, oh, my family, um, my social life, my health, my business, whatever, making money, whatever it may be. Okay. Now tell me what your typical daily schedule looks like. And we'll find, like you said, that like 90% of people are not self-aware, even though they might say they are. I will find that 90% of a person's life is completely out of alignment with the yeah. five priorities that they say yeah, that they exactly, want. Yeah. Right. And I love it when like a couple comes in, like we want to be the best couple ever. And we've done everything. I'm like, Oh, okay. What books have you read on relationships? Yeah. yeah. Nothing. What YouTube videos have you watched? Nothing. Who have you talked to? Minister, pastor, rabbi, priest, guru, shaman, mm -hmm. zero. Okay. So you say you want X, but you've done absolutely nothing yeah. about it. Yeah. How much of it is all talk and how much are you willing, yeah. really ready, willing and able to do? And that's where I start the yeah, conversation. So true. I mean, I was just talking to uh, somebody yesterday, a really um, a well-known personality, like, you know, all, uh, like very well-known personality in Hollywood. And they, they were saying the same thing. A lot of people talk, but nobody takes action. And uh, that's the key. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite quotes from one of my mentors, Dr. Scott Walker, who's the founder of Neuroemotional Technique, which is this incredible mind-body healing arts modality. Um, he said that the universe always rewards the action step. Yeah. And, and when my clients come in, the first thing I want to do is congratulate yeah. them on, mm -hmm. on showing up, yeah. right? Not yeah. flaking out, showing up for themselves because mm -hmm. it's scary. They don't know me yet. They don't know anything about me. Maybe they were referred by a friend. Maybe they just found me on the internet. Maybe they heard a podcast episode, um, but they don't really mm -hmm. know me and how I'm going to relate and interact with them. So that's really scary and they're being yeah. really vulnerable. Yeah. So I do believe that once they show up and they show up again and they show up again, but they have to do exactly. the work. It's not just coming for the session and then the second they walk out the door, everything is left yeah. in my office. Yeah, implementation, integration and second, is very yeah. key, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a huge part of the self-awareness is how much are you taking what you yeah. say you want and now integrating it and making your life that lifestyle yeah. by design, not a lifestyle by reactivity. Yeah, so true. I mean, all those things you said, um, yeah, I mean, if you just unpack them, apply them in your life, it, 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 it has a life-changing effect. Yeah, absolutely. So if you were to have this conversation with someone that you were meeting um, and you knew that you really only had two minutes with them and you would never mm -hmm. see them again, but you really wanted to take all of your world experiences, all of the wisdom that you've gathered and, and, and share mm -hmm. it with them in a way that will hopefully will be meaningful and give them some new things to walk away with and maybe even change the trajectory yeah. of their life. What would you so say? One is, uh, you know, value, value yourself. Um, you know, just make sure that uh, you do not take on anybody else's price label and put it on your yourself. You know, print out your own price labels and do not compromise on them, uh, unless you and be flexible. You know, if if uh, if the market tells you that you're not worth that much, then you need to change that price label. But pick your own price labels, um, and it doesn't mean in terms of uh, money, in terms of everything else as well. You know, your time, your your priorities. So don't let anybody else. Uh, give them to you uh and then uh the other thing is uh, uh accept that everybody has faults in them nobody's perfect and you know we tend to um uh, get bogged down by perfection uh perfection of ourselves perfection of others and we are so all deeply flawed um and so you know just accepting that fact uh, brings about a level of empathy for others that uh, that is really comforting because now you're not like constantly finding faults in others and yourself and not uh, you know not constantly looking at life as as, as such a negative experience so uh, i think those are the couple of things that i will say and uh, that's where you start and obviously self awareness is a big part of it and uh, and yeah i mean it's a, it's, a, it's a journey very very fascinating journey go on that i mean these are first steps i i can uh, share Awesome. So first, I want to congratulate you on all the success you've had to date. And obviously, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. And I know that there's some places that people can find you. Um, you know, if Instagram is is yeah. under your name. No, no. Um, so I couldn't find, I can get the, the name handle. Um, so I used uh, another uh, nickname one of my friends gave me in sixth grade. But you can just search for my name on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, 
So yeah, the 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 Twitter handle and the uh, Instagram handle it's Manuj Agro. Uh, they they tried to shorten my last name, but uh, just search for me on LinkedIn and Facebook. That's where I'm more active. Right, and they can also check out your yeah, podcast, yeah. Bootstrapping yeah, Your Dream Show, right? And that's available on yeah, all platforms perfect. as well. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, if you listen to today's episode and you found the value in understanding how much mindfulness is and uh, how important mindfulness is and how much meditation can help you on all aspects of your life, even and especially if you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, but even more so in your day-to-day life with your relationships and just your level of self-awareness and you want to hear more, please check out Manuja's books. Please check out his podcast. Go on there, leave him a written review, which will help him get more people to check out his show. As well as if you got value out of this episode or any other episode, please go onto iTunes and leave the You Winning Life podcast, the five-star written review, and share it out with your friends and family or anybody else you think would benefit from this. And again, Manuja, thank you so much today. For thank you so me. much for having me. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the You Winning Life podcast. If you are ready to minimize Maximize your personal and professional struggles and maximize your potential. We would love it if you subscribed so you don't miss an episode. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Jason Wasser LMFT.